Hello everybody, Janet Becker's here and I'm really excited to welcome, uh, welcome you and introduce you to a lovely, lovely friend of mine, Anthea Faulkner. Hi Anthea. Hi Janet, how are you? <laughs> really, really good. Look, Anthea and I have known each other for years and years and years because Anthea has been a client in numerous ones of my programs uh, for quite a while, just really building up your first business. And we'll talk a little bit about lessons from building um, a business and then lessons from then selling a business and moving on. So we'll cover a little bit of that. Um, but today's core one is something that I know, you know, is just huge for us in business is really getting a handle on your finances so that when those bills come in, that you are just with absolute confidence and lack of stress, knowing that you have got the money there to be able to pay your bills and that you are in total control of everything to do with, with your finances without getting into that total overwhelming geeky type zone. So um, I'm really excited that we're going to be covering this topic because I know it's something, you know, that I've struggled with for years and it's something that I know that makes a huge difference when you nail this in your business. So very exciting to have you here. So get ready to take notes, everybody. Um, but first of all, Anthea, it's, um, let's just talk a little bit because everybody here that is on the line that is listening is in business or if they're not in business yet, they're setting up a business or they may have been in business for years. And so it's really lovely to hear a little bit about your story, about why you're doing what you do now. Mm. Um, and so people can get a bit of an insight into there because you've got a lot of lessons to be able to share with people. Yeah, thanks. I'm so happy to be here. And I just, I'm particularly passionate about helping small business owners and particularly female small business owners. And I know you work with a lot of female small business owners mm. to, to get some traction in this area because as women and as small, small business owners, we can really be behind the eight ball a lot. Like I see mm. so much small business owners not paying themselves super, not getting their tax sorted so that they're left with a huge tax bill at the end of the financial year or quarterly bass or whatever. Um, and, you know, when you're setting up a business, your cash flow is so unpredictable. You know, it's not like, like we're really, I think, you know, in a lot of ways we're at an advantage because we, that there is so much room to be able to generate the kind of revenue, the kind of income that we want. Mm. But we need to be in control of the finances big time because there's no one paying our super. There's no one telling us to, you know, to, to manage it so that we've got the tax sorted. And, um, and, and what, you know, I have a very personal story with struggling with finances, being a small business owner. Mm -hmm. My husband also runs a small business. So, you know, together we kind of, I don't think we were living particularly extravagantly or anything like that. We just were coping with life. We were doing life by remortgaging constantly oh. you know, up to the point where we couldn't do it anymore. You know, we were luckily living in this, you know, in, in Sydney on, you know, in the Eastern suburbs, the value of our property was going up and up and up, but we got to the point where actually we had so little equity that we couldn't actually keep going with that. Right. And you know, um, there would, there would be a lot of people who are listening here that can really, really relate to that. Yeah. And I think, you know, our focus, there's so many focuses as a small business owner on like, you're really a general manager, you know, you're, and, mm -hmm. and often we're coming to small business, having worked at maybe as employees, having, um, sole responsibility for one aspect of that business but all of a sudden you're having to deal with the marketing the sales you know the finances the client interaction and your head explodes oh. <laughs> and often people will drop the ball around this stuff and you sort of think oh it'll just work itself out if I focus on the revenue mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately if you haven't got your expenses locked down your expenses are going to catch up with your revenue. It actually doesn't matter how much you're earning. 
if you don't have those expenses locked down and you don't have your cash flow locked down, it's at some point it's going to come back to bite you. And that, that's, that's what we found. Yeah. Um, and so, you know what, that's, um, I love that you've, that you've really picked up that difference between revenue because, I mean, that's that old saying, you know, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity. Mm. And there's so many times that I will find that people are focusing on how much revenue they're making, but they're not, they're not making enough profit to pay themselves, mm. but they're focusing on that revenue. And it's a really rude shock because you think you're doing okay. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's, a, that's a really good story. Thank you for sharing that that was the challenge that sort of got you going down this path. There was, I mean, you know, it was, there was sort of business and personal aspects to it. You know, we were kind of remortgaged to, remortgaging to, you know, Rick had to pay out his ex-wife and his ex-partner and raise his daughter as a single parent. And, you know, it wasn't sort of anything extravagant that we were doing by any means, but we, we got ourselves into this situation. And I, and I just hear it time and time again. Often, you know, people will seem to be going along fine for a, a certain period of time and, and they factor in, they can factor in all those regular predictable expenses that they can see and, you know, that happen within a year or, or so. Most people can have a handle on those, but it's the unpredictable expenses. It's the long-term replacement costs of things mm. you know, that, that often people are winging it with and they're not actually they haven't got a really comprehensive handle on all of their expenses so i'm talking about things like you know and and it's not hugely expensive but driver's license renewals every five years or mm. um replacing your car tires every three years replacing a car battery every couple of years replacing your hot water system every 10 years um, mobile phones every three years, computers every three years, you know, cars five to 10 years or 15 years or whatever. And people kind of, they're just crossing their fingers and hoping that they'll have the money by then and just hoping that the revenue and the, the profit will have just um, manifested so much that those things will take care of themselves. But, but actually they don't unless you, unless you factor them in. And the problem that we see often, and this is what, what, what happened with us, is that when you haven't factored in those things, you're basing your spending decisions on your bank balance. And your bank balance isn't a good indicator of exactly whether or not you have money to spend on whatever it is. Like if you want to spend money on your business if you want to, you know, invest in something or if you want to go on a holiday or buy that dress or go out to dinner and you're looking at your bank balance to tell you whether or not you can do it, yeah, you really have no idea. You're really kind of flying blind. So what, what we do is actually help people factor everything in, have a really clear plan for spending and, and, and base their spending decisions on targets. Um, that you know work with the, with their account, but not n are not um, solely reliant on the bank balance because you know your bank balance goes up and down every day. You know, yeah, <laughs> so and you know you'll be going, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll um, you know let's go away for the weekend. We can do it. You know, there's enough money there in the bank, and then it's like, you know, a few weeks later that you go, oh yeah, the rego was due. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And yeah, yeah, hands they're, they're up, the, everybody that's done that. I know I have. Everyone, <laughs> everyone has done it. And they're the expected things, you know, let mm. alone all those unexpected things that most people aren't, aren't factoring in. I have no judgment, by the way. I was totally there and this is why I do what I do now is because we found a way out of that and we found, oh, yeah. you know, a really good, very unique kind of solution which is, which is, I just hate the word budget because it so doesn't <laughs> say what we do because a budget is such a, um, it, it's a really rudimentary, crude kind of tool for managing your money. It basically, it shows you that it's possible to spend less than you earn. Like usually budgets are, are 
are based on a month or a year, say, and it will be like, and often people will take it from their profit and loss statements or something like that. They'll go, okay, this is, this was our gross income. These were our expenses. This is our personal expenses. Oh, okay, I can see it's possible to spend less than we earn and have something left over, but there's no roadmap to follow. There's mm. no, it doesn't factor in time at all, which is a really crucial part of the the issue you know the timing of payments um the the timing of when clients pay you when your income comes in and when those bills go out or when those expenses happen is crucial and it's also crucial to have the right kind of fences around your finances as well so i'll talk a a little bit more about that you know as we go along but yeah um, that's brilliant so i think so one of the big things we've got here is if, 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 you have, if you've been listening to this today and go, I just don't get it. Like, why is this a problem? You know, go you. Like, <laughs> but if you're listening to this and going, oh, yeah, yeah, a bit embarrassed to say that's been me or that is me, I've been doing this. As Anthea was saying, like, no judgment here because I think most people, have been in that situation and it doesn't, you know, a lot of times you will see people um, that on the outside are doing exceptionally well. You know, they 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 may be having great revenue, they may be having a great lifestyle, but you don't know, you know, what's happening with them. You know, how much of how much are they really making the most of the income prices? You know, in you know the, the property prices. As you gave us that a great example at the beginning. So, if you're listening to this, just know, like, totally, that's okay, and. That's the past from today backwards. So, <laughs> so how about we have a look now at really helping people to get started here. So mm. everything that is happening now so far is just in the past. We're letting that go. So this is the new plan moving forward. So, and if we keep in mind here, we've got personal side of things and we've also got business because as I was saying, most people listening to this podcast are in business. So, and I love that you can be talking about this from both sides. So let's do that. Let's get stuck straight into mm. like, what do we do? What do people do if you've got a business and a lot of what you've just talked about really, really, really resonated. So let's go step by step what people can do now. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, so I just want to precursor this by saying that we've worked with hundreds of small business owners now over the last few years and we've done, we've taken some, uh, what I do is we give people um, a starting point and then we track their results over time and we've um, calculated that roughly we've helped people save about $1.5 million in the last couple of years alone, which is That's fantastic. really amazing. And it really shows that what I'm going to teach you today really works. Mm. And so you, def- you definitely want to want to do these things. So the first thing, there's a couple of things. One is creating those fences that I talked about before. So oh What I see a lot of, and, you know, maybe if you're listening in and and you do some of this already, good on you, but a lot of small business owners, especially when they're starting, they haven't got that separation between business and personal. Yeah, it's really cool. And so often what they're doing is using a credit card to cash flow their business and then paying it off at the end of the month. And, you know, and most people can do that reasonably well. They can pay off. Um, the full amount. But the problem with that is that if you haven't got a really good handle on all of your expenses, all your predictable, anything that's got a date and an amount of money attached to it, Mm -hmm. um, all your unpredictable expenses, so your clothing, your, um, your car repairs, your Um, medical expenses, you know, those things that are a bit rubbery, a bit sort of, you know, that you're going to need that money, but you don't know exactly when, when you're going to need it. Mm. Um, And then all the long-term replacement costs. If you haven't got a handle on those things, then, and you're basing your spending decisions on how much money is coming in, then you may be able to pay off your credit card this month and the next month and the next month. But then all of a sudden, some something unpredictable will hit like the hot water system will go something like that and you'll be like oh 
okay, now my bank, now my credit card balance is creeping, creeping up and I haven't actually been able to pay off the full amount this month. And this is how it starts. It, it just slowly over time builds up until such a point where you can't actually pay off your credit card in the full each month yeah. because you haven't factored in those expenses. So I'm thinking of a particular client at the moment who um, they have, a, they have a, a, a very successful business where they, um, they make fiberglass moulds for one of the big motorhome companies, okay. right? And huge revenue. You know, they're doing really well. It's a family business. They've got their sons working for them. Um, but they'd racked up, you know, $80,000 worth of credit card debt because they really didn't have a handle on all of their expenses. Yeah. Um, and so we got them off using the credit card. So they're actually, they, they, they still use the credit cards, but it's in a very controlled way. So coming back to the kind of fences that you need around your finances that we talked about before, on the business side, you need a business bills account, you need a tax account, a totally separate tax account, and depending on the nature of your business, you may need a third account for unpredictable business expenses. Some yeah. businesses don't need that. Some business can, can do it all within the one business account, but some actually might need a separate account. Um, and then on the personal side, you need at the very least three basic accounts and possibly a third as an, a fourth as an emergency fund. So you need a bills account for regular predictable expenses. So this is for, it's not, it's not just bills, quote unquote, like electricity bills, mortgage payments, although those things definitely go into that account. But it's also things like birthdays which are very regular and predictable everyone has a birthday it happens at the same time every year you know christmas happens every time at the same time every year you know how much you want to budget for it so anything that has a date basically you can also include some longer term replacement costs of things in that account as well so things like car tires car servicing every six months right. um, things like that. That's the bills account. The second account is the unpredictable expenses account. So this is anything that doesn't have a date. So you're going to, and, and, and it's not a long-term savings account. It's for things like clothing, car repairs, medical expenses, those rubbery kind of expenses that you're going to need that money through the year. And right. so what I get clients to do is work out, okay, so how much do you think you need for clothing for the year, say? Yeah. And say they say, okay, well, I think I need $2,000 for clothing for the full year. We divide that up into either weekly, two weekly or monthly transfers and we transfer that money out of the bills account into that separate account. Right. So you've got, you've got your business account Look, looking at the total picture of your personal expenses will tell you how much you need to draw in personal drawings from your business account. That goes into the bills account and from the bills account that goes out to your unpredictable expenses account and then the other account, I should draw a, a diagram. Of yeah, this yeah. <laughs> I'll give you one. You can put it in the show notes or something. Yeah, let's do that. That would be great. And then, and then the other one is the um, weekly spending account. And if you just did this one thing alone, I guarantee you would save so much money. And what this is, is I, I call this the triple FI. So it's the food, fuel, fun, and incidental. So it's your groceries, a little bit of, you know, if you, if you told me, I can't go without my once a week coffee out or, you know, I can't go without having coffee every day. That's my thing. Or pizza on a Friday night or whatever. You just work out how much that exact amount of money that you need for that thing. How much do you need for groceries? How much do you need for fuel? And maybe just 20 bucks extra for a little bit of wiggle room or something like that. Right. Add it all up. And then per week, you create the same transfer automatic on autopilot that goes across to the weekly spending account every single week on the same day. And you get used to living off that amount of money. Right. And it, 
and it's cash, it's your cash, it's not a credit card, you know, like I encourage people, Visa debits are great because you can, you know, um, you, you've got the facility of a, um, a Visa or MasterCard or whatever, but it's your money. Mm. Um, and then what people find is like we're incredibly adaptable human beings. You know, if, we're, if we have a set amount of money every week, we just will live within that. You know, if you get to day mm. five or six and there's no money in that account, which rarely happens because we just sort of adapt to it, then you're just staying home and, you know, eating what's in the cupboard or what's in the fridge. Yeah. You're, you're riding your bike more. You know, we just, we just, um, but the problem is that when people have it all in the one account, they're just operating out of the one account or maybe they have one account and a credit card and they put everything off the credit card, there's no control. There's no sense of this is enough, this is what I need to spend in order to get to my goals because that's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, which is the super important piece, is that you want to put your goals front and centre. Because right. if you have clear goals, that will determine what these other amounts and transfers and everything need to be mm. to help you get to those goals. And I love so. how, because at the beginning you were saying, well, you know, you'll be going off what your bank balance is and think, oh, yes, I can afford it. So I love what you've done here is you're not trying to change the way that we always do that, you know, where you'll go in, oh, yeah, like the example I gave, yeah, we can go away this weekend. Um, you know, because we've got the money in the bank. It's just that the account that you're looking at has only got enough money in there that you are allowed to spend. Mm. So you're still using exactly the same psychology that you would have used before, which I quite like that it's you're not you're you're not taking away that psychology. You're just making the amount that you can't you've you you you're giving a realistic yeah. Value. Mm. Yeah, based on the real picture of mm. looking at all of those different expenses that you have. Mm. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that, you know, sometimes like I've, we've worked with people who are on such a, diff a range of incomes, you know, some people who are earning 50 grand a year to 50 grand a month, you know, like really different ends of the spectrum and it makes no difference how much people are earning it's all right. to do with the control you know so often people on higher incomes are actually struggling with that they're struggling with less control and hemorrhaging money faster mm. than the ones who have less because there's a necessity there to really lock it down yeah um, but answer. with that with that lack of control, there's also a lot of anxiety that comes with that. So um, yeah. I just had this thought about I, I was I had a point there, and I, it's just lost me for a second. It'll come back. <laughs> well, one thing that I was thinking, as you were talking about goals, is yeah. you talked about when it comes to your your personal. So you've got your you know your main bills account. Then you're sort of taking yeah. from there into the unpredictable account so don't go dipping into that one everybody okay mm -hmm. then you've got your weekly but is there another one that you may have say for for your savings like would you just have that like where does that fit in here is that something yeah. that is a priority like is that first and everything goes backwards how what what do you recommend there um, yes, yeah, so I think it's really important to look at what those goals are because the goals will definitely determine the choices that you make around other areas of spending definitely um i think this is where i said three basic but an extra one for an emergency fund because okay. if you don't have an emergency fund with at least sort of two and a half grand sitting in it which would cover it would cover you for you know if you if your car broke down you had a major mechanical repair if you got sick for a few weeks if a family member died and you had to fly somewhere, it would kind of cover those things, right? So it's right. not, it won't last for too long, but it will just allow you not to have to reach for a credit card to put those things on a credit card. So I think that's really important. Um, in terms of your goal, so if your goal is to actually pay yourself super and <laughs> invest in your retirement, which I really recommend people look at because I often hear of small business owners just going oh, I'll just I'll put that off you know I'll wait until like I've got other things I've got to pay employees suppliers 
they put it last. And really, we know that if you want to get ahead, you've got to pay yourself first. And that is paying yourself first. So super, you know, is, is one of those things you can, you can set a regular transfer out to a super account and that's factored into your spending plan as a part of your, we call it an expense, but it's really, it's really, you know, part of your savings. Um, in terms of like holidays or saving for a home deposit, uh, say it was saving for a home deposit or for an investment property, you know, you wanted to, you've got your home, but you want to get ahead, you want to save for a deposit on a new property or something like that, then you want a totally separate account for that. And you want to make it automatic so that that money is, is just whisked away before. <laughs> you don't want that hanging around in your account. So I, I often tell people it's best to um, work off a zero balance budget. And what I mean by that is every dollar is accounted for in some way. Every dollar has a job. Um, so so that there's no sort of, you know, I mean, obviously you want to factor in a little bit of coffee money or entertainment yeah. money. You know, you want to be able to. One of the things I really noticed actually is that I often used to deprive myself, deprive, 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 think because I didn't have a clear handle on it. And I was like, I was always anxious about spending money but when you actually factor those things into your plan and you can see everything is covered, it's okay, I can actually go out to this concert tonight and not have a conniption about whether or not I'm going to be able to afford it, that's actually quite a freeing sort of experience. Yeah. But, but just having everything in there and then um, and, and the paying yourself first, you know, whisking that money away into a completely separate account makes a huge difference definitely yeah, yeah. and I think the nice part about what you've also there said there about well you're working out exactly for your goals what your business needs to provide to you and so mm -hmm. what I know is going to happen when people take your advice here and have set this up is they're going to go oh shit <laughs> <laughs> my business mm -hmm. can't pay me Mm. what it needs to pay me so yeah. then it really does make you face okay what can I be doing in my business that's going to be smarter so yeah. that it's going to pay me it becomes because a lot of times people will go into business not because hey that's the best way for me to make a stack of money it's mm. because it's it sends freedom. Like I can do what I want to do. I'm escaping, you know, somebody else telling me how to spend my time. And so very often I'll find that people will be going into business and I'm the classic example of, you know, it took me a while going into my business. I was doing what I loved making money. And then, but really it was more around doing what I loved and then the money came. Mm -hmm. But what I'll find a lot of people will keep on doing things because they're loving it but they're forgetting that that business, it owes you. Mm. Like it is there to provide you with the lifestyle that you want. And so when you were talking about at the beginning about always, you know, making sure that they're separate is because then it allows you to go, okay, business, pick up your game, baby. Mm. Like, <laughs> you're meant to be working for me. It's a very, very different mm. mindset mm. to seeing mm. it as the thing that is supporting you rather than the other way around. Um, because uh, yeah and absolutely and and I think what often happens with people when they start businesses is they're enjoying like you're saying just the the ability to be able to have that freedom and mm -hmm. do what they're passionate about but after a few years when they realize that actually their business is not supporting them that's a stressful stressful experience and mm -hmm. you end up giving up all that hard work that you've done and going back to a job because you haven't got control around something yeah. that, that you can get control about. And that can, and that, actually, this is what I was thinking of saying before when I lost my train of thought is often people will come to us and, and, and that there actually isn't enough income there for their lifestyle. Right. Okay. And you would think, well, well, what, you know, why would you bother doing a budget then? Or why, why would you bother doing this if there's not enough income? Like, but, but what happens is when people get that clarity that they need 
and they have worked out all of their lifestyle costs and they actually have a plan and they can see exactly what that shortfall is per week it gives them it gives them it empowers them to actually go all oh, right so people can actually see oh okay i see that i have a 200 dollar weekly um, shortfall they can see the exact number that then they can go, oh, okay, well, if I just, you know, bought on one more client or if I just, you know, whatever it is, yeah. they can actually see, all oh, right, okay, and then they go out and do it. It happens every single time because people uh -huh. have that clarity. They step into that then and because they're not worrying about the finances, they can actually see the road, the path forwards all of a sudden it frees up all this creativity and opportunity to start to start to hear opportunities and start to respond to all that great stuff you know where mm -hmm. whereas when you're stressed about it and don't really know whether or not everything's going to be covered it really it really clouds your mind and and kind of blocks off opportunities so yeah that yeah. is such a great point because that's absolutely going to happen that there's especially if the way that you've been living at the time has meant that there has been you know a credit card debt or yeah. you know wherever else is that something's been giving you an artificial sense of your lifestyle that a lot of times people are going to avoid even doing this work because they're thinking i don't think i don't I'm want really, to face really, it i don't want to face yeah. it i yeah. don't want to face it mm -hmm. and you know what that's um if that sounds like you if you're listening here that's yeah. okay. Like just accept that that is a really normal thing mm. to do that avoiding. And, and I'm saying it's okay because that was my default for a long, long time. Mm. And yeah. under stress, I'll do that as well. You know, <laughs> mm. that's why I all like very, like when I first started my business, um, I got a bookkeeper before I was even making money because mm. I wanted to know exactly how much I was losing. <laughs> um because yeah and why yeah. now you know he's you know he's always there and he's always telling me you're in the green if you don't do something you'll be in the red you're in the green yeah. you know all mm -hmm. this you know somebody who can who can keep you really really informed it, mm -hmm. it is incredibly empowering yeah if the news you're getting is not good it's empowering because you know what you've got to do yeah um, well if you think about it and this is a horrible analogy but it's a bit like you know that you have a wound you need to ex you need to rip the band-aid off expose it to the sunlight so it can actually heal if, yeah. if you just kind of live in denial and it's it is our human nature to just not want to like we just think oh i haven't got time i haven't got time to deal with that right now that's a huge one mm -hmm. um but if you can just invest i'm talking like half an hour a day for a week or one wow. Saturday, literally it doesn't have to take you a whole lot of time. I've got a whole bunch of resources that people can help to start this process. Um, but, but that's all it takes, you know, it, like we're talking a, a week at the most right? You know, to, to get a handle on what the full picture is. Um, and, and if you can't invest a week or, you know, like half an hour a night for a week or one Saturday, then there's something wrong you know yeah. like really that's that's not a whole lot of time but we can blow it out of proportion we can just think oh it's just i don't know where to start and mm. it's all overwhelming and you know that can really i love it off. so for people who are listening now so number one you know we've already talked about no judgment baby so whatever mm. you're finding is happened in your life and in your finances and how that affects your business at the moment that's okay that's just in the past from today the next part there is just really going you know what i may want to deny this but i am actually going to be i love the step by step and we'll do that we'll put a bit of a flow chart mm. together of how you know where your money goes and those little account numbers because that can be a really nice thing that we'll just add as a little cheat sheet for people that'll be a simple thing for us to do mm. um and so we've, we've talked about those parts there. What would, what would be really, really good now is for people who are listening, so what's the next steps? Like where can people go to get some resources so they can do that half an hour a week, half an hour a day for a week? Like 
where would they go to get those resources to make it really simple for them? Um, yeah, so I've got a couple of, I've actually got two different PDFs. One is a personal expenses, income expenses checklist, which covers everything. It literally, it's six pages long. It will, it, it has everything that you could possibly ever spend money on and probably lots of things you'll never spend money on. So you can just right. put a line through those things, right? Excellent. But it will trigger you to think, to actually think about all the things you need to factor in. So all of those long-term replacement costs, all of that sort of stuff. So that's a great one. It's mm. like, this is, this is, I don't, I just put this on my site for people to just download themselves. They don't even need to like sign up for an email list or anything like that. Right. You can just right. have those. So I'll just give you the links to those. It's a personal one and there's a business one as well. Actually, do I have the business one on my site yet? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll find, I, I know I have it ready. Um, I'll, I'll let you know. Anyway, we'll yeah. put, I'll put the links below. I'll get it up there if it's not. Um, so that business one has all, all the different, you know, for, for every business, all the different types of expenses you might need to think about. So start there, but I always tell people start with your personal. So yeah. I would just say download the personal one first because if you haven't got a handle on all of your personal expenses, there's really no, like it's really important to get a handle on that first before you dive into the business side. Yeah. Um, so that would be the first start. Um, and, then, and then look at the flow chart and work out, which you've probably got a bunch of accounts already that you can repurpose for these purposes. So that would be the next step is thinking about which accounts. Um, the, I, I always say that the bionic sort of extra aspect to that is this particular software that we use. So we use a very unique forward looking kind of a system mm. yeah. that is very different to anything else I've come across. So most budgeting systems look backwards. They'll tell you what you spent your money on and it's all about tracking expenses and you know all that kind of stuff which really is useless like i we used to keep boxes and boxes of receipts it did not help us one iota in forward planning right so what this does it's a bit like kind of like a crystal ball for your finances where you can actually plug everything in program it all in and actually see a 365 day view of what your bank account is going to look like you well, can see powerful. one year, two years, five years, and 10 years, right up to 10 years if you wanted to look at that. Um, and it will show where the shortfalls are. So if this is your starting balance today, you know, and this is your income flow, these are your expenses, you're going to experience a shortfall in August. On August the 15th, it's going to go below. And that's incredibly empowering information. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, so if people are interested in finding out more about that, they can just go to my website, which is brightspenders.com.au and it will have you know, information on all those things. But definitely start with the expenses mm. and then you know, if you want to find out more, there's stacks of free resources, articles, lots of... I've lots actually, of yeah, I've, I've been on Anthea's, um, you know, I've, I've been on your email list for each of your businesses actually. <laughs> it's because I like to look at it and go, oh, there's Anthea. <laughs> oh, I love what she's doing. She's so good. You know? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, you really fantastic articles. Really, really useful. And yeah. so that's brightspenders.com. Is it .au? .au. Yeah, yeah. definitely .au. go there. And everybody listening, we'll put links in the show notes. So if, you, if you're yeah. listening to this on iTunes or you're watching it on YouTube or wherever else you find good podcasts, mm. then just come over to where it clicks to go to the page, to the web page, or just go to romanceyourtribe.com, look under podcasts, and you can just search for Anthea or money or budget or all those sorts of things. And, um, and you'll find we'll have the links there to the pages where you can go and get those resources that Anthea's got for you, where you can go and find out more. And we'll put together... Um, you know, like a cheat sheet download that's just got that flow chart for the, you know, where where the expenses go, like what those accounts are, because that's great what you talked about with those fences. Um, this has been so amazingly helpful, Anthea. Really, really, and my mind's buzzing here. I'm going to find out more about your forward planning software. I think that's a great tool for people to have for personal and for business as well. Mm. Yeah, I use it for both. I have two separate. Um, right. The, yeah, plan my business finances going forwards, but also personal. I 
keep them very separate. Mm, mm, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Um, I love that. I, I mean, I get my bookkeeper who does our, our forecast for me and I just, yep. I just find it. You can sleep at night because you know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Um, it's really, it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, so that's just going to be wonderful. So, everybody, you go there, check out Anthea. Um, so, for people to find you, is to go to your website the best place to go? Yeah, brightspenders.com.au. I'm also on Facebook, just Bright Spenders. And I'm not, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm not on Instagram yet. Too many focuses all at once. Actually, one of the things that I really learned from you, Janet, is when you're starting in business, not to try and do everything at once Mm. and to just really kind of chunk down what you could do in the next 12 weeks that would be high priority, high bang for buck and just focusing on that. Mm. Um, And so that's why I haven't got an Instagram page. That's my excuse. Isn't that funny? Because when you were saying you haven't got Instagram yet, I'm going, good. (laughs) Good because you, you you can claim the space. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's been very, very strategic. And so, yeah, that's great. That's, you know, that's a good takeaway for everybody. Those 90 day planning and that one big focus can just revolutionize mm. your business. Yeah. And so one of those things can be to set all of this stuff up and having it running like clockwork. Mm. That's going to make a huge difference in your personal life and your business life. Mm. So, um, yeah. Thank you so wow. much for your time, Anthea. Thank you, everybody who was here. One of the best things that you can do for Anthea and I is to give us some feedback. Because mm. um, we, you know, we love sharing what we do. And, um, and one of the best things to know is, have we helped you? So mm. anything that you've got from today that's in our heart, you can, you know, leave a comment down below if you're wherever you are, whether, um, you know, you're on the website, whether you're on social media, leave a comment. Go and find Anthea over on Facebook, not Instagram, and um, and over on her website and just drop her a message and tell her what you've done, like what was an aha. Yeah. Honestly, it's the best thing that you can do for us. And what I would be exceptionally grateful for is if you're listening on iTunes, I'd be very grateful if you would give a star rating for what you think and also leave a comment. Um, and if it's a comment specifically on today's episode, that would be brilliant. What did you learn from Anthea today would be great um so that's my my big ask of you is to take a minute or so to do that um because that truly keeps us motivated to keep on making sure we over deliver through here so thank you everybody for being here and go and take some action get it done baby um thank you so much anthea absolutely such a pleasure it was (laughs) great to be here always yeah (laughs) bye okay